when was the last time you heard of a liquor store owner going up and down the halls of a high school trying to sell gin? If it's legal and the profits aren't there, you're not going to have the profit motive for people to go out and sell it. Or um, I ask, what? when's the last time you ever heard of a vodka addict uh, breaking into houses in order to support a vodka habit? You, know, you can make enough money to support it if it's legal. Uh, when things are illegal, they tend to cost 20 to 25 times higher. So that's 20 to 25 times as many houses as you have to break into. <laughs> On the drug part of this, I find this to be a really interesting one because, you know, I, I always describe myself as a classical liberal and people always say, well, Dave, you sound like a libertarian. What is a classical liberal? And I always say, well, look, a classical liberal in, a, in effect is what I would say a, a really sort of a realist libertarian is, meaning that I love all the libertarian ideas, but I understand I can't win all the time and I'm going to have to put some some guardrails there. That That's the way I, the most simplest way that I would describe it. So in my book, I talk about the drug war, and, I, and I'm for legalizing marijuana, I'm certainly for legalizing um, psychedelics, and, and then we can whittle down every little drug, but I'm not personally for legalizing the seriously hardcore stuff, and it's not because I wanna put people in jail because of their decisions, but, but the simple truth is, I know that if someone was cooking meth next door to me, I know that there's gonna be more crime and I know that, that it's going to be riskier to be out there and you don't want kids there and the rest of it. So are you for legalizing absolutely everything with no regulations or is this a place where you, you find some some middle ground? I, I know you would kick it to the states regardless, but, but where do you fall on this? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the states right now have laws on drinking and I was appalled when I moved from a state that, you know, you could drink pretty much anytime you want. And then I moved to the South and I was shocked when I found out what you can't buy alcohol on Sunday. You know, what kind of, where did I end up here? And in fact, we couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday until pretty recently. So, um, so I, you know, yes, I, even though I, I don't like those laws, at least there's some uh, competition among laws, unless you get the federal government involved. And by the way, I realize I'm, I'm going to, kind of leave the topic for just a minute, just to explain real quick, because a lot of people don't know that, you know, we had, when, when I was in school, in fact, I was a bartender in college because I was in a state where the drinking age was only 18. And that's mm -hmm. the way it was back then. The different states had different drinking ages until Elizabeth Dole, transportation secretary in the 90s, came along, took in, you know, just like government always does, federal government always does, takes in the money, and then dangles the highway funds in front of states and says, hey, do you want your, uh, you want your highway money back? You're going to have to raise the drinking age. Now, we can have a debate. You know, maybe 21 is the better drinking age, whatever. But the point is, it shouldn't be the federal government deciding that. Mm -hmm. It should truly be the states. So when I say, okay, let's have the states, you know, you know, we'll, we'll let the states regulate it if they like. I mean, really let them regulate it, not have the federal government, you know, backdoor in there trying to um, hold bribes over their head. So uh, they can do what they want. So really. So, so, they, you, so you'd let them do it. Uh, yeah, well, go ahead, I was sorry. just I'm confused what you said, because you said that you wouldn't legalize the harder drugs, but then you talked about, you know, having um, somebody have an meth lab I mean, I guess, is a meth lab a harder drug or I'm, I'm confused? Yeah, well, well, meaning I wouldn't want, if, if meth was totally legal, uh, then I suspect that more meth labs would be popping up. And I know that I, right now, if someone moved in next door and was cooking meth next to me, well, I, we know it's, it's illegal and someone will hopefully do something about it, assuming we still have a police oh. department here in Los Angeles. I'm not sure. But if it was legal, there would be no recourse. And we know what will happen. Crime will expand. You'll get oh. shadier people around your property value will go down, et cetera. Well, I see it completely differently because we've got huh. alcohol. We, well, alcohol is legal and I just don't hear of many people making bathtub gin. But that's part of the problem is when you legalize something or decriminalize it, however you want to do it, is it has to truly be legal. So for instance, in California, they've legalized marijuana, but they've limited the number of people who can sell it. They've got all these licensing laws. You've got to pay all these fees. So there's still underground, there's still an underground market. There's still people selling marijuana illegally. So that means the laws aren't right. Uh, again, 
When's the last time you heard of anybody selling bathtub gin that would cause somebody to go blind? You don't because it's it's legal to the point that we go down and we buy it safely. So if if meth were legal, there wouldn't be people making it next door. They'd be making it down at Philip Morris or whoever, uh, Seagram's, you know, whoever makes uh, the other drugs. Okay, so I so I'm not with you there, but I do understand the line of thinking. Okay. So that, that that's just fine. But what would you say? This is where the conservatives, I think, see the libertarian movement as sort of bananas. Because I think this is where conservatives would say, okay, I get freedom, I get states' rights, I get all that stuff. But you're telling me that, in effect, if there was enough demand for meth, that Philip Morris and Unilever should start making meth if the market demands it. And we know that a society filled with meth is not great. So the conservatives would take sort of, we want to conserve sort of a functioning society where the libertarians are saying it's more of a free for all. Do you think that's like a fair, it's just sort of like a philosophically different spot? Well, I think they're misguided. Uh, first off, if you look where marijuana is legal, you haven't seen increase in marijuana use, let's say in teenagers, and you haven't seen it um, basically abused. You know, I, I, again, we look at alcohol. I'm right, you know, but, but having... marijuana is not marijuana is not highly addictive the way meth or you know some opiates, you know, some of the more hardcore stuff is. Well, alcohol is highly addictive. Tobacco is highly addictive. Those are very highly addictive. In fact, our own Surgeon General said that uh, tobacco was the former Surgeon General. I believe it was C. Everett Coop who said that tobacco was just as uh, highly addictive as heroin. So uh, and, and yet that's legal. But, you know, what we have right now is we've got drugs being illegal and so they don't go for help and even look at where it starts you know again when was the last time you heard of a liquor store owner going up and down the halls of a high school trying to sell gin if it's legal and the profits aren't there you're not going to have the profit motive for people to go out and sell it or um i ask what when's the last time you ever heard of a vodka addict uh breaking into houses in order to support a vodka habit. You know, you can make enough money to support it if it's legal. Uh, when things are illegal, they tend to cost 20 to 25 times higher. So that's 20 to 25 times as many houses as you have to break into. And so I'm looking at it. And by the way, I'm not a drug user. Well, actually, I am. Uh, bourbon is my drug of choice. <laughs> yes, yes, bourbon is a drug. And yes. I, I got a graduate certificate in drug and alcohol studies. And I understand that the way our neurotransmitters work, alcohol is actually a very dangerous drug, much more dangerous than marijuana. Um, but somehow, somehow I got through the 1970s in high school and college, never having tried marijuana. I got to admit, you know, I'm a goody two shoes. But the, the, the point here is there's not a profit motive. You know, when, well, when people ask me about legalizing uh, drugs, the point is, and, and they say, well, but I don't use drugs, so I don't care. I say, but you should care if you care about crime. You should care if your kids are in a school, because right now there's a profit motive to get your kids hooked on drugs. And, and high school kids themselves will say, you know, it's a lot easier to buy marijuana than it is to buy alcohol. Yeah, because alcohol is legal. There's not the profit in there. There's competition. It's We've got the free market out there taking care of it. So how about yeah. let's have the free market take care of the other things? And then if you do have a heroin problem, let's treat it as a, a medical issue and not a, 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 you know, a criminal issue. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.